In this lesson, we'll introduce the idea of protected attributes, which are attributes that the developer designates as being internal or semi-private to the object. Protected attributes are not meant to be modified directly by other developers when they're working with your objects. Rather, their values should only be modified by instance methods. Before we get there though, we have to introduce the concept of encapsulation. Encapsulation is one of the three principles of object-oriented programming, along with polymorphism and inheritance. It's a term that is subject to some degree of debate, but encapsulation is essentially the idea that data should be bundled together with methods that work on that data. Now, some argue encapsulation means that an object's data should be hidden and that the only way to modify it or to access it should be through instance methods. The term encapsulation comes from a capsule which protects its payload. It's the same idea with an object serving as a protective layer around its data. The way that we've changed our object attributes before, where we just use dot syntax and an equal sign, that approach is frowned upon by certain developers who argue that it's less safe because there is no protection or validation. For example, what if somebody sets an attribute holding a number to an invalid value like a string? it can make the entire object fall apart. In a method body, you can perform validation before you overwrite the value of an attribute. But when you're simply modifying an attribute just with equal sign syntax, you don't have the same luxury. So encapsulation reflects the idea that a developer should not be able to interact willy-nilly with any object. Rather, they should only interact with it through its public API i.e. through its public methods. Now, this is kind of an interesting concept to explore because Python, conversely, is what's called a consenting adults language. So it trusts its developers to do the right thing. And the community has come up with a nice compromise, a nice middle ground that addresses both of these desires for privacy as well as openness uh, together, and it's called protected attributes. So let's come back to this discussion in just a second, but for now, let's declare a new class called smartphone. So I'll define a smartphone class. I'm gonna capitalize the S in smart and the P in phone. And in here, I'll define a dunder init method, which will take self. And let's say I'm building a smartphone for Apple. And to start out, I'm going to assign manual static constant values to these attributes. So I'll have an attribute called company, which I'll set to Apple. And I'll also have a attribute called firmware, which I'll make equal to a version number of the phone, which let's say will be 10.0. And below, I'll instantiate a smartphone object and I'll assign it to a variable like iPhone, all right? And of course, we can take a look at those attributes, company as well as firmware. And everything so far is looking just fine. However, if we are another developer interacting with our code, simply by writing our attributes like this, we are suggesting that they are open to being changed. And maybe some developer looking at our code can say, okay, well, maybe I can take this iPhone and change its company to something like Samsung and take something like its firmware attribute and change it to something completely irrelevant, like let's say a string of nonsense. And if I copy and paste lines seven and eight below, we're gonna see that the values of those attributes have changed and they are allowed to be changed because any attribute in Python is going to be public by default. All attributes are public, which means we can access them and we can very easily overwrite their values. So as I mentioned earlier, in some languages, only instance methods can access and change the object's attributes, i.e. its state. Now, Python is often called a consenting adults language because it trusts its developers to do the right thing. And here's how that concept works. If we see an attribute just like this, a public attribute, you should assume that users who will be using your class will and can modify that attribute with basic dot syntax. Now, all object attributes are public technically in Python, which means we can technically access any of them and alter any of them. Company and firmware are two examples. There is no real concept of privacy. However, there is a way that we can suggest to anybody reading our code that they should not modify or touch an attribute, all right? There is a community standard that has evolved around how we can signify that an object attribute is not meant to be overwritten. And that is a single underscore before the attribute name. All right, so here I'm gonna add it. I'm gonna add underscore company and I'm gonna add underscore firmware. I'm gonna remove my code below. And of course, lines seven and eight will not work. So I'm just gonna add my underscores in here to show you on the right-hand side that we're going to get the exact same output. And we call these attributes protected attributes. 
So to reiterate, there is nothing technically different about them, right? An underscore is just a valid character and you can have a valid character in your attribute name. However, what the underscore is, is a very important visual signifier to other developers that tells them they should not manually be setting these attributes in their programs. The only way that they should be interacting with them is by invoking a public method that does something with these attributes. It's a message to other developers that the attribute represents some kind of internal implementation detail that may change in future updates to the class. Again, technically speaking, the underscore means nothing to the Python interpreter, it's just a character. However, among Pythonistas, among our community, it's a very important convention. We are trusted to do the right thing because we are consenting adults. By the way, the underscore rule also applies to instance methods. An underscore before an instance method name indicates that a developer should not invoke it directly in their code, on the object when you've instantiated it. Instead, that protected instance method may only exist to be invoked directly by other instance methods inside the class that you can invoke. So now that we've marked these attributes as protected, we do need to define some kind of interface that is gonna allow other people working with this class to actually use it. So what I can do is define some public instance methods. So here I'm gonna define a method called getOSVersion. And notice I am not prefixing this with an underscore, which tells people who are reading this class that they are welcome to invoke this method. Don't access this, but you're more than welcome to do this because it does not begin with an underscore. And here, all I can do is pass self and simply do something like return the value of my firmware attribute. All right, and that's gonna allow them to see what operating system the smartphone is running. But more importantly, let's define a method like update firmware. Right? And what this is going to do is allow us to update this number, let's say from 10 to 11 whenever they upgrade their operating system, but we're gonna do it within a confined space. So they can't just take that attribute as we saw a minute ago and assign it to nothing. Instead, they know that they have to invoke this method. And in here, we're gonna obviously be serious about what we're doing here. So I can print out something like reaching out to the server for the next version. And then maybe here I will update the value of my firmware protected attribute to be one greater. The point is the user is not meant to set this manually. Uh, the way that they're supposed to update it is to invoke this method on this uh, instance of the smartphone class. Now, again, just to show you how this works, I can, for example, invoke iPhone.update firmware, and I'm gonna print out the value of the firmware protected attribute below. All right, so here we see the print function from line number uh, nine, and then the return value of this method itself is none. And then we see that the version of the firmware internally has upgraded to 11. So the syntax on line number 18 proves that we can still read that attribute and we also can still update that attribute. We can technically do something like this, iPhone underscore firmware equals 12 or true or a list, it doesn't matter. However, what we are signifying with this underscore is that it is protected and that any other developers looking at this code should know that this is an internal implementation detail should, that should not be touched. It is not how the object is designed to be used. The way the object wants to be interacted with is through the public attributes as well as the public instance methods, which of course are gonna begin with no underscore. That's all there is to cover in this lesson, so I will see you in the next one.